After you create the basic structure of your new HTML file, then the next thing we're going to want to do is to put in the contents of that file, the things that are going to show in the browser when we open it. Now you'll notice down on lines 10 to 12 here in our new file, we have a opening body tag and a closing body tag. The way we know the, the bottom tag here, this closing body tag, the way we know it's the closing one is because it has this forward slash in it right there at the beginning. The opening body tag never contains the forward slash. The forward slash is an identifier that tells the browser where the last tag is. Now, everything that goes between the body tags, this is where we put the content for all of the file. Everything that we want to see in the browser, we put between the opening and closing body tags. And for us, that's going to be the content of the Gettysburg address. So we're just going to click on Gettysburg address.txt and it'll open here in Visual Studio Code. Use Control A to select it and then Control C to copy that. And then we'll come back to the Gettysburg HTML file. And right here, right after body, we're going to place that content with Control V. And that pastes the content in. Now, one of the things we need to start doing is working on getting this file ready for the browser. So one thing we need up here is the title of this document. So we're going to come up here right in between the opening and closing title tags. And we're going to put in Gettysburg Address as the title of this document. Now, if you're curious what the title is and where we would see that on the web page, you know that when you open a browser that there are tabs in your browser at the top of each web page. And the tab contains the title of that document. And this is where you create the title of the document that goes inside of the tab on your browser. Now, the head section contains information about your document. We don't put things in the head section that we intend to show in the web page. The things that we intend to show inside the web page, we place in between the body tags. So right now we want all of this content to go in between the opening and closing body tags. The next thing we need to do is what we call markup. And let me show you what we mean here by markup. I'm going to go ahead and save this file. So control S. And then I'm going to use the go live server so I can preview this page. Okay, here in the go live browser, what we can see is again the location of our file. And we can see that it is in the week two folder and that it is named gettysburg.html. But look at the way the content came in. It just came in as if one continuous long series of text. Now, if I pull this down just a little bit, and you can see here that in the text inside of Visual Studio Code, the content is laid out neatly into paragraphs, but those paragraphs do not show in the browser. So this is one of the first and most important lessons to learn about the markup language that we call HTML. Whenever there is content in your code, then if we don't tell the browser what that content is, the browser is just going to stick the content in there and it's going to give it whatever formatting it thinks might be appropriate but it's never going to be getting it right. So let me show you here the way this works. We're going to start with this first line up here, Lincoln's Gettysburg address given and so on. We're just going to highlight this entire line of text right there. Now, what we want to do is that we want to wrap this line of text inside a couple of HTML element tags. 
The best way to do this is to use a feature in Emmet. So I'm going to press F1 to open up the command selection window up here. And you can see I've already tapped this in once where it says Emmet wrap with abbreviation. And if you don't see that here, then you could just come right here and type wrap with abbreviation and it'll come up to the top. When it does, come over here and select the little gear icon. And when it does that, we're going to see this blue line and it says the command Emmet wrap with abbreviation. And here it says a key binding. So let's give this thing a key binding. I double click and it gives me this little window down here. I'm going to use Control Shift A and you should see that populate in this field. Down below you can see what it's showing and then as the instruction says after you enter the combination then press enter so I'll do that. And so here we can see that we have assigned the key sequence Control Shift A to this command Emmet wrap with abbreviation. So we can just close this thing now about keyboard shortcuts. Now we're going to come in here again. I'm going to select this text. This time what I'm going to do is just press Control Shift A. That opens a blank box at the top and it says enter abbreviation and then press enter to confirm or escape to cancel. So what I need to do now is just type in the element name and I know that the element name of this one is going to be H1. And as I type in H1, you can see that it has filled in the opening H1 element tag. And at the end, it's placed in there the closing H1 element tag. So up here, after I type in the H1, I'm going to press Enter. And that causes that change to be accepted by the browser. So here we have typed in H1 element tags around this first line control s to save that and then i'm going to go back to the live server window and see what this looks like and so now you can see the browser has been told that this first line of text should be identified as an h1 element which makes the text much larger all in bold and it's set off with extra space above and below it if we come back now to our text, and I'm going to select this next paragraph, Control shift a I'm going to wrap this paragraph in a tag that is intended to be used simply for paragraphs of basically text content. When our abbreviation window opens at the top, then we'll type in the P element name because a paragraph will be always marked at the beginning and end with a set of P element tags. P for paragraph. Press enter and you'll see the opening and closing P tags at beginning and end of that paragraph. So control S to save. Go back to our window. And so now you can see that the first paragraph is identified here different than all of this text down below it because it is set aside with space above and space below, just exactly what we would want to see with our paragraphs. So what we'll do next is just select each of these paragraphs, and we're going to mark them in P tags all the way down. We're going to use P tags for paragraphs uh, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and then we'll take a look at it in the browser again. So we'll see what this looks like now in the live server. And what we see here is we have our heading one text and then each of our paragraphs are marked off as paragraphs. The browser knows that these are paragraphs because we told it that there are paragraphs by using the opening and closing P tags. So now the browser is presenting the content the way that we want it to look not the way that the browser wants it to look. Now, we have a few more little things to do to this, and we'll do that in our next video.